And it really is kind of uh, frightening. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So as your girlfriend constantly reassures you, it's not the size of the battery pack that matters, it's how you use it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know you don't have a girlfriend. In this video, we're gonna be hearing from the engineering expert of experts, Sandy Munro, <laughs> talking about the frightening advantage that Tesla has in terms of their battery technology. Of all the things that matter in terms of electric vehicles, Software and the battery are the two most important components. This is a great way to look under the hood, literally, and discover just how far ahead Tesla is of the so-called competition. So let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description and if you'd like up to two free stocks check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account and if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously free stocks? Yes please. And finally if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support guys. Let's get back to it. Okay so uh, Ben put a little uh, chart together and that'll be on the bottom of the screen here but in essence what it is it's looking at which vehicle the battery uh, pack weight the uh, battery pack capacity so in uh, kilowatt hours and then the driving range. Now We've put a couple of these things together before, and uh, so we know at least um, at least six of them are absolutely correct. Um, the Mach-E, we're using the data that the we've Ford's gathered. Provided, yeah, Ford has provided. And by the way, guys, just to avoid any potential confusion, Tesla has since improved the Model 3 and the Model Y since Munro actually tore down both vehicles. So we'll show the updated figures shortly, but I just wanted to put that out there now so nobody's confused in the comments. We can garner two things from this. First is that Tesla has pulled even further in front of the so-called competition. And second, Tesla's pace of innovation. Munro and Associates tore down the Model 3 and the Model Y not that long ago. Yet we'll be able to see the leaps and bound improvements that Tesla have made since these teardowns. This further illustrates the point. So let's see what they've got to say. So, uh, so let's just maybe quickly go through them. So we got the Tesla Model 3, the battery pack weighs uh, 439 uh, kilograms and its uh, capacity is 75 kilowatt hours with a driving range of 310 miles. If we look at the Tesla Model Y, it weighs a little bit less for the battery pack at three, uh, sorry, 437 kilograms. Same uh, basic, uh, basically uh, battery pack capacity at 75 kilowatt hours, but it goes five miles uh, further with uh, 315 uh, miles. The Chevy Bolt, um, its battery pack weighs about the same as well, 436. It only has uh, 60 kilowatt hours um, and its driving range is about 259 miles. Now at this point, a few of you might have done some rough numbers in your head and thought, hang on a minute, the Chevy Bolt's actually doing pretty decent there. Smaller battery pack, pretty reasonable range. What's going on here? The engineering seems pretty decent. The missing piece of the puzzle here, which we'll discuss in the moment, you also need to account for the mass, the weight of the actual vehicle. Chevy Bolt is a much lighter, less massive vehicle, which means less energy is required to move it. Another way to think about this is a fat person walking up a flight of stairs. We can all picture the end result, huffing and puffing. Why? Because they needed to move more mass. Moving more mass requires more energy. The I-PACE, and this is where we start to see a gigantic jump, and, uh, and it really is kind of uh, frightening. So here's where things get rather interesting. I talked a moment ago about the fact that we really need to consider the actual weight of the vehicle itself, which we'll do in a moment. But independent of that, it's also a consideration in terms of engineering ability to determine how much does the battery pack in the vehicle weigh versus how many kilowatt hours of capacity there are. In other words, how much energy density are we finding in the battery pack? For every one kilogram of battery pack, how many kilowatt hours of energy are in the battery pack? Tesla really leading the charge. I <laughs> see what I did there. <laughs> that was really bad. With the energy density in their battery packs, 
Admittedly, the iPACE and the e-tron have larger battery packs, but the additional kilowatt hours of actual energy in the battery pack doesn't account for the difference in weight. What we're seeing here is garbage engineering. Additional parts, additional weight, which is very important to reduce, especially in electric vehicles. In a nutshell, we're seeing the numbers are demonstrating really poor engineering to the point where Sandy Munro labels it frightening. I just wanted to point this out because it really matters. The iPACE is at almost 600 kilograms. So remember, the other guys are under 450. It's got a 90 kilowatt hour battery, but it only goes 234 miles. You'd think that it would go further than that. Uh, that's less than the Chevy Bolt. We look at the e-tron. Oh, I can't even do it. Here you do it. <laughs> that one jumps up another 100 kilograms, up to 700 kilograms. It does get a little bit more uh, capacity with 95 kilowatt hours, but its range is dropping even more down to 218 miles. Um, these two vehicles, the iPACE and the e-tron, are perfect examples. The battery pack capacity is not the way to go yeah. to increase range. There's a lot of other things that you can do between uh, efficiencies in the vehicle, in the motors, in the gearboxes, and uh, the aero aerodynamics of the vehicle to help with range. In fairness to Audi, I actually think in naming their vehicle the e-tron, they were attempting to give consumers a truthful and honest depiction of what the vehicle actually is. Let's head over to Google Translate. Etron, turd. I'm not even kidding guys, they literally named their car a steaming pile of shit. Accurate, if nothing else. I appreciate the honesty, Audi. Well done. And then lightweighting the entire vehicle. Well, the other thing too is, I mean, the wire harnesses are, I mean, even, even, even you get losses just by running electricity down wires. It, uh, these things were both uh, uh, not very well done. Yeah. And then the i3 that we had was a 233 kilogram battery pack. Uh, it's small, only at 22 kilowatt hours, and it would go 81 miles. Uh, then the Maki here that we dropped, we weighed it yesterday and it came in at 485 kilograms. We do, we do not have the extended range version, so this one's only at 68 kilowatt hours and will go 211 miles. Um, as far as the weight on this, it is more than the Model 3 and the Model Y, uh, but there is some, some structure that's going on here. Significant, yeah. See, a significant amount of structure that's here that's not in the body in white. Remember I said we also need to account for the mass of the vehicle when trying to really understand how efficient the battery pack is, how good the engineering is? Let's do exactly that. So here we are over on Twitter. Shout out to Matty Mogul for putting this graphic together. Let me explain what we're looking at here. Electric vehicle core efficiency. Over on the left here, we've got the EPA range in miles divided by the battery size in kilowatt hours. Along the bottom here, we have vehicle mass. So the main thing to pay attention to the higher up on this chart we're looking, the more efficient the vehicle is in terms of miles of range extracted from its battery pack. Now, this still doesn't account for the actual mass of the vehicle. Although this is on the chart, it's not factored in in the same way we're gonna look at shortly. But this is still a very interesting visual way to look at the data. And the further to the right we're looking, the heavier, the more massive the vehicle is. As we can see, Tesla in a clear lead, a cut above the rest, not even close in a league of their own. We can also see that Hyundai, actually pretty decent here with the Ionic, Kona, Renault Zoe, not too bad, Chevy Bolt, not too terrible either, BMW's i3, not the worst in the world, Nissan Leaf, decent, and Nexpeng G3, decent. But as I said, this graphic doesn't actually factor into the equation the mass of the vehicle, which is what we're going to do now to get a true picture of the engineering prowess of Tesla and how far ahead of the so-called competition they really are. The absolute best way to visualize this data is in table form, which is exactly what we're looking at now. Again, shout out to Matty Mogul for putting this together. It's a few months old, but the numbers speak for themselves. Core efficiency here is being calculated by factoring in the battery capacity in kilowatt hours, the miles of range achieved, and the mass of the vehicle. This is the most useful metric in terms of understanding the quality of the engineering in an electric vehicle. And we can see Tesla sitting on top of the table, literally the Model X long range, Tesla's Model S long range, Tesla's Model Y long range, Tesla's Model 3 long range, and Tesla's Model 3 standard range plus, taking out the top five positions. As we saw in the previous chart, Hyundai actually surprisingly coming in close behind Tesla. I also just want to point something out for those of you playing along at home. Notice the total range achieved by Tesla's vehicles. 
In and of itself, we've got vehicles in the 300, the 400 and the mid 300 mile ranges. If you run your eyes down the rest of this table, you'll scarcely find another vehicle even coming close to 300 miles of range. This in itself, quite embarrassing. And as a consumer, if range matters to you, you basically have no option other than to buy a Tesla at this point in time. Now sure, in the future, a manufacturer could come along and stick a gigantic battery pack in a vehicle and get much bigger range than Tesla. But at what price? Literally, they'll have to charge tens upon tens of thousands of dollars more just to get equivalent range to what Tesla is able to do with half the battery pack. So Hyundai doing quite well, Mercedes and Ford not too shabby either. Same with the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt. Things start to get pretty ordinary in the latter half of this table though. The Polestar, basically trash. Renault Zoe, not too impressive. Rivian, based on the specs announced, nah, not looking too good there. The Audi steaming pile of shit. Close to the bottom of the pile, Xpeng G3, even worse. Jaguar I-Pace, even worse than that. Neo, even worse than that. Shout out to all the investors in Neo and Xpeng, <laughs> just saying. BMW i3, almost the worst of the bunch. And the Porsche Taycan, absolute garbage. This EV core efficiency table is a great visual representation of just how far ahead of the so-called competition Tesla truly is. And not only that, but it shows how far behind some of the laggards the absolute worst of the worst are. And it truly is frightening. And you know what's even scarier than that? Tesla's structural battery pack featuring the new 4680 cells is going into production later this year. This is going to provide a huge boost in core efficiency beyond where Tesla is already at today. Talk about frightening. As I've said in the past, in fact, as one of my best selling pieces of merch says, don't bet against Elon. And of course, if you guys would like to pick up your own don't bet against Elon shirt, mug, etc., check out the link in the description. Helps out the channel. Great way to start a conversation with fellow Elon fanboys and fangirls too. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you enjoy taking a look at Tesla's insane battery lead? As Sandy Munro said, it really is frightening. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.